Welcome back to segment five on the online anatomy portion of the uh, Falcon Review Series. Let's move into folding and take the embryo to a three-dimensional structure from two dimensions. We'll start by focusing in with a question. An eight-month pregnant woman went for a prenatal checkup. The physician ordered an ultrasound and found that the baby's small intestines were herniating into the amniotic cavity and bathed in amniotic fluid. The condition was diagnosed as a gastroschisis. This condition is due to the faulty development of... The answer is D, lateral folds. As we move from week three in, into week four, the folding of the embryo starts to take an important role. It's at the end of this third week that that flat embryonic disc will become cylindrical because of the overwhelming growth rate that will happen to cause the head fold, tail fold, and two lateral folds. It's the prolific growth of the neural tube that's going to start forcing the head and tail folds in the uh, rostral and caudal plane. Looking at this first image, the yolk sac connecting stock and the cut plane, we need to get a two-dimensional embryo into this three-dimensional view. We'll look first at a sagittal section where we can see the forebrain and notochord um, on the dorsal aspect and then the cloacal and oropharyngeal membranes on the cranial and uh, caudal ends of the embryo. The heart and the diaphragm, which is just under it, uh, are going to start being pushed down and in front of the embryo and then they'll segment in to form the thoracic and abdominal cavities uh, for the formation across the yolk sac. So it's both the cranial and the caudal folds that will start to pinch off the yolk sac. If we look at a transverse view in the third image, you can see how the um, neural crest and the, the lateral walls are now also starting to grow prolifically and these will pinch off the lateral walls of the embryo except for a very small area at the mid portion of the embryo where the yolk sac will remain attached. These lateral wall folds will be what gives rise to the intraembryonic coelom and it will basically pinch off some of the extra embryonic coelom in doing so so that there's two distinct cavities formed. So from this area the growth of the somites will start to be what causes the lateral foldings, prolific uh, folding in. The margins of all four of these folds will be the primitive umbilical opening that will tether the embryo back to the placenta. Embryonic folding has a head fold which will include the dorsal part of the yolk sac which will make the foregut. This will also form the cardiogenic area and the orobuccal pharyngeal membrane will swing into the ventral side of the embryo from the dorsal aspect at its head end. It's the tail fold which will invaginate to form the hindgut by pinching off the yolk sac. This fold will carry the connecting stock, the allantois, to the ventral side of the tail of the embryo. The cloacal membrane will swing from the dorsal to the ventral side and the hindgut will start to be formed at this end. And then caudal to the connecting stock lies the uh, small pit known as the ectodermal cloacal membrane and this will start to be lined both by skin uh, from the ectoderm. It's the endodermal cloaca, the hind part of the hindgut, caudal to the allantois, and this dilated form uh, area will form the endodermal cloaca, where the lateral folds will come and enclose them as part of the yolk sac. This will be known as the midgut, which will lie between the foregut and the hindgut. We'll come back to this when we discuss the uh, formation of the abdominal cavity. There's several folding problems that are really critical for you to understand for the USMLE Step 1. One is that there's gastroschisis that can be formed or epigastric hernias. These are going to be defective developments of the anterior abdominal wall and the abdominal contents will herniate through these gaps. And they're because of the faulty development of the lateral folding. 
the small intestines will oftentimes herniate into the amniotic fluid and then this can be detected prenatally by ultrasound and the defect usually occurs on the right side near the median plane of the umbilical cord. Here we're looking at a two possibilities as a result of lateral folding errors. One is the omphalocele and in this case the omphalocele is a herniation into the umbilical cord uh, into the umbilical cord allowing the organs to be covered by peritoneum and that peritoneal membrane in some ways protects the organs. Um, the worse the developmental closure failure is the more organs that can be in this space which will include liver and spleen. If you look at the herniations of these, the regular bowel herniation would be 1 in 5,000, but the more rare liver and other organs being enclosed in this would be much rarer at 1 to 10,000. A more serious effect would be a gastroschesis. And in general, I would encourage you to remember that anything that ends in schesis is never good. There's an improper closure in a gastroschesis of the anterior abdominal wall, but there's no involvement of the umbilical cord because it's going to go uh, skirting past this on the right side typically and the organs actually herniate out into the amniotic cavity and that amniotic fluid and the exposure that it has uh, it oftentimes damages the organs. It's about as uh, common as the omphalocele uh, and the surgical repair is possible but the recovery is oftentimes longer and there's a very high chance of, of not surviving a serious gastroschesis. So what do we have by the end of the embryonic period? First of all, there should be a head that's rounded and starts to look human. There's a caudal eminence or tail which has disappeared. The ears and eyelids will have started to develop by this time and all of the major intestinal structures uh, as well as the cords that are going to have formation in the embryo. In fact, at the end of this period, there'll be a physiologic herniation where the embryo's internal organs are growing so quickly that they just don't fit inside the abdominal cavity, so they naturally herniate out into the umbilical cord. With ultrasound exam, uh, the pregnant uterus between the fifth and eighth week of pregnancy will help them to confirm pregnancy and estimate the correct duration of the pregnancy si uh, time. It's the gestational age which can be estimated by measuring the size of the chorionic cavity and that will be good up to about eight weeks. After that period they'll start to use the crown rump length of the fetus after that point. I really don't think it's worth going into too much detail about the various crown rump lengths uh, for the step one but it will be for specializing later on in your careers. Finally, I wanted to leave you with some structures of the primary germ layers, the ectoderm, mesoderm, and endoderm. I'll leave you to look at some of these and what is derived from each of these during the formation of these early embryonic periods. That concludes portion five. In portion six, we'll start looking at the somites and the muscle development.